Hi everyone, I was just about to go live and the computer went berserk and I had to reset the entire system. Uh, I don't know, I don't think I was hacked or anything, but there we go. Now you should be able to see and hear me perfectly well. Let me know that that is the case and I straight away want to get right into it. lot to cover. You might want to get a phone to record some of this stuff uh, with a camera phone. You should be able to see me at the bottom of the screen. What I would like to know from you good people is that you can indeed see and hear me loud and clear. So if you could put that into the chat box. Um, and then I'll know that. Let me also know if this is the first time you're on here and also where you are. Uh, before you ask, I'll pay Mercy side. Thanks, Liam. Uh, okay, let me know if it's your first time as well. We've got Rochester. We've got a whole load of other places. We've got a, we've got a good number of people on. Uh, let's start off with some polls. I'm going to do a poll uh, and then I'll publish the results. Good evening, everyone. Apologies again. I was a couple of minutes late. I try not to be late. And then what happens? I'm not kidding. The computer just went absolutely berserk. So uh, you can see it. We're here for the stock market update. Busy week for me. Absolutely crazy busy week. Uh, one of the busiest ever. So anyway, I did the BBC. I talked about, well, I like to talk about billions, don't you? So I spoke uh, on the BBC about the EFTA deal uh, as well regarding the inward investment into India. Uh, we've got quite a few from New Zealand, um, Northern Ireland. I've got Belfast. I have got uh, Antrim uh, as well. We've got Bradford, Chetland from Bradford. Uh, I went to school in Putsi. So right next to I was born in Leeds. Uh, so there we go. Uh, and New Zealand. Good morning, Peter from New Zealand. So getting on with all of this, uh, I was also uh, hosting an event at Level 39. Now, I'll try and invite you to as many of these as possible. So keep an eye out on Telegram for invitations to these kinds of events. Uh, and the reason being, sometimes they're at short notice, sometimes I can invite people. And Level 39 was a wonderful place to be. And it was a technology exchange. We, would, we spoke to companies setting up in the UK from artificial intelligence to cybersecurity to space companies as well, all setting up in the United Kingdom. And um, always gives me a bit of an insight into the markets. Now, let's talk market update. So I put these two polls on my LinkedIn channel. If you're not on my LinkedIn, it's arpishpatel.com forward slash links is where you would go. Arpishpatel.com. I swear to God, at one of these events, uh, one of these um, webinars, somebody said, how do you spell that first part? Uh, arpishpatel.com forward slash links. Okay, I put it down there as well. First timer, Graham from Bedfordshire. Fantastic, Derek from Buckinghamshire. We've got Canterbury. Uh, coming in, Surrey and Essex nestled in between Surrey, Canterbury, Buckinghamshire and Bedfordshire uh, as well. These were the results from there. We're going to address some of these issues. It's not a scientific poll. It's people on my LinkedIn, of which there are some 22,000 uh, people. So you might say, well, not many votes. But we did do another one as well. And I'll share the results with that in a second. Don't forget, if you're on the Great Investments Program, I've got my dinner on Friday, the 19th of April. April, so email me. Uh, I will be dressed up in black tie wearing a barrister's gown because that's my in. So you'll get to see me dressed up. Uh, and again, keep an eye on Telegram for more events. So talking about the markets, uh, and this was another poll, separate one we'd done earlier in the year. We'll address some of these issues. Low pension returns, wealth managers and IFAs, clueless or useless, don't know how to sack IFAs. That comes up a lot as well. But first things first, how is the market looking? This is the numbers there are what you're paying for every expected dollar of future profits. So for Microsoft, you're paying $31 when you buy their shares for every expected future dollar of profits. Apple, you're paying $24, Amazon $32. Now you might say, why the hell would you pay more money for Microsoft than you would for say ExxonMobil, for instance, or Johnson & Johnson? Okay, and the reason is valuation, which is what this is, share price compared to profitability, is not the only measure of value. Yet IFAs will try and send you, sell you funds, which are value funds, and ignoring growth, which is a relevant factor, dividend yield, another relevant factor, cash flow, another relevant factor. Anyway, I wanted to show you this to show continuously, yes, the, the bits that we own a lot of and have made us the most money have been the most overvalued. So what? Because valuation is not the only thing, only metric, though it's an important one, but it's not the only one. 
Uh, and the people whose research I've relied on for all of this, I've written about them in my 18 books, including uh, this one here, you can see. And if you look at those links, you'll be able to download a free copy of this anyway. Uh, and the people whose research I've relied on, as I said, they went on to win the Nobel Prize in Economics. They were Daniel Kahneman, Richard Thaler, and uh, Eugene Famer. So we know value isn't the only thing, but it is the most important. So what else is important? Well, we will keep an eye on, of course, companies, all other things being equal, which are undervalued, because all other things being equal, we'd rather have ones which are undervalued and high growth. But we know things such as growth and momentum are important. That's why we're not just going to ditch all of these ones in red. But yes, banks, I'm keeping an eye on. Financial services, I'm keeping an eye on. Telecoms and communications companies, keeping an eye on. And any healthcare ones. And I'll deal with all of those sectors in this broadcast as well. Something else I wanted to show on here is this. And I've accidentally missed the S&P 500 one for, for some reason on here. So this is the Dow. These are the market cap of the Dow 30 companies. Now, most people don't know the Dow has 30 companies in it. They're not all listed here, of course. Uh, but that has 30 companies in it. Microsoft's worth $3 trillion. The NASDAQ 100 has 100 companies in it. And you can be in the Dow 30 and in the NASDAQ 100. Okay, I'm just saying this. You can also be in the S&P 500, which I've missed somehow of putting in there, but don't worry, it's on my Telegram channel. Uh, uh, and you can be in the Dow and the NASDAQ 100. Sometimes that confuses people, and that's because they're different indices, but you can be in each of those. They're not, they're not exchanges. The NASDAQ is an exchange. The S&P 500 isn't an exchange, and the Dow isn't an exchange. All right. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. And I wanted to put some names past you. I do own some of these and I'll cover some of these as well and which ones I own in a moment. Now, remember, the S&P 500 was up 25% last year and the NASDAQ 100 was up 55% last year. Okay. So just to let you know, in terms of and these are names you'll recognize. I mean, you should probably recognize every single one of these. If you don't, God help you. Maybe Broadcom, you don't. Uh, okay. The other thing that came across my desk, which I thought was quite interesting, was this. Uh, uh, and Ravi, I want to thank him for initially drawing this to my attention. And then uh, I came across it as well. A higher January and February could mean the bull continues. The bull continues. S&P 500 performance went higher in January and February. And we've had January and February, of course. So what happens in each of these years if uh, January and February is up. Well, actually, this is how March goes, almost always positive. The final 10 months of the year, i.e. the remaining 10 months of the year, uh, do that. And the next 12 months, I, I assume they mean from the end of February, next 12 months, uh, rather than 12 months after the year is finished, although that's not clear there. Uh, but I should check it, and that's easy enough to do. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good up here so you let's see what of you think in terms of the FTSE I put a poll up on screen for those who could see it uh 44% said yes the FTSE will be higher well the FTSE is up 7% since 1999 not per annum in total okay so if you think it's going to have an up year god bless you for your optimism um the Dow now that I've given you that data <laughs> be interesting to see if you think from these levels whether it'll be up given what you can see on screen it's like one of those school exams uh, okay, but I thought I'd just share that with you. So what we're going to cover in this, and this is uh, a brief summary, we're going to look at the S&P 500, which have been zooming ahead, the NASDAQ or the Cube, uh, which has been zooming ahead. We'll look at Microsoft, uh, Apple in this video, NVIDIA in this webinar, Meta, uh, Alphabet, and Amazon, okay, and how they're doing. And overall, the market rally continues. Uh, Apple had fallen off a bit. As you know, I'd sold half my holding. but Will I regret that? Dun, dun, dun. Should I have kept hold of all of it and just waited it out? Well, let's see. I'm going to talk about it in this. Now, remember, my approach is not just to look at the charts. It is to look at the valuation of a company because we know undervalued companies tend to do better than overvalued ones, though it's not a guarantee they'll perform better. And we know from those Nobel Prize winning laureates who have written about in all my books that Value is twice as important as revenue growth and earnings growth, but growth is important. So you want undervalued companies that are growing. Now, your IFA won't do that. What they'll say is, I'll put you in a value fund and I'll put you in a growth fund. That is not the same as having one company which is both undervalued and growing. Uh, 
having a bunch of undervalued companies, which might all be undervalued because they're rubbish, and a bunch of growing companies, which might be incredibly overvalued, is not the same as I've got you a value fund and a growth fund. Why do asset management companies do it? Because they have so much money to manage. They divide by geography, UK, Europe, Japan, Asia, excluding Japan, Southeast Asia, Vietnamese, Laos, tiger economies. What's the new thing? Oh, I've forgotten the name. They've got a new acronym, uh, GONADS. I can't remember what it is. Given performance, it probably should be that. Uh, so that's the first thing. Then they'll do by theme. Oh, we'll do clean energy. Listen, it's my pension. The clue's in the word. It's a bloody pension. I'm not going to live that long. Really not bother about clean energy when it comes to my pension. If I want to bother about clean energy, I will invest in charities helping clean up the atmosphere. Noble cause. Fantastic. Leave my bloody pension alone from your politics. I really need to get a good return in my pension. All right? I'm not sacrificing myself when the rest of the world isn't going to bloody well do it. And that's the problem. Uh, right? Make lots of money from your pension. Give it all away to UN Climate Change Fund. So that's the second thing. Themes, geography, and then style. They'll say only value, only growth, only income, which is idiotic because as the Nobel Prize winner said, well, all that does, Eugene Famer in particular, said all that does is means you're ignoring incredibly important information like the growth of a company or the value of a company or the dividend yields of a company. So we're going to look at all of those. Um, we also want to look at cash return capital invested. For those who don't know, and I'll come to it later on, uh, Deutsche Bank Wealth Management invented it. Goldman Sachs Wealth Management used it. Their quantum division showed me some slides, which I'll share with you later on, which showed that companies in the top quartile as a basket generally produce 30% per annum. Not every uh, not every stock in the basket, but overall, uh, okay, on average. So we definitely need to tick that box. It's 30% per annum. Well, if the richest clients of Goldman Sachs Wealth Management are getting it, I bloody want some of that, right? Momentum, Citibank, um, man group, all of these will tell you that that's incredibly important. Hopefully you can all still hear me uh, uh, clearly. Sortino, which is average return. Uh, you want a high average return, don't you? But actually, you want a high consistent average return. No point somebody getting an average return, which is really high, because they had one year where they gambled at Vegas, and the rest of the time they're getting negative returns. But the average is still high because of that one off. So Sortino measures that. Uh, and alpha just means if the market goes up, you go up more. If the market falls, you still go up more. Alpha is what you want out of any manager. Well, why don't we just pick a load of alpha stocks? Da -da, then we've got alpha. And I need all of those to be green. So we go through 10,000 stocks and look at which ones are all green. Gopri, I'll answer. Um, he said, is it true you removed the magnificent sound from SME? It's not done much better than the FTSE. Um, I don't know about that statistic, but one thing I know is if you remove all the things that are good, then all you're left with are things that aren't good. Okay, so uh, let's look at the past week. Uh, so what's happened over the past week? Well, Oracle's up 14%, Microsoft's up 3 Alphabet, Google, uh, Walmart's up 2 So we've got some spread of wealth, uh, Pfizer 7 uh, as well. So, you know, some good growth, Shell up 2% in just a week. General Electric, going to come to that because I've been, as you will know, speaking about it a lot in these broadcasts. Uh, that's up 6 in just one week. That's not Magnificent 7, by the way, uh, as well. And um, service now, which I said, look, we've had a great run. I'm getting out of now because I wanted to reduce last week some of the holdings. Well, that's gone and gone up, gone up 6%. So there you go. Qualcomm, which I continue holding, and you know I've got and Micron. So they're up significantly. Intel, which has been lagging, and we'll look at the details on that in a second, um, has at least had a good month, a uh, good week. And Adobe at last, which again is one of the ones I own uh, as well. And of course, NVIDIA continue owning, and I can't believe it keeps going up because it isn't based on valuation, obviously, <laughs> that I'm holding it, or growth. Well, I'd have to speculate about growth because growth is unfathomable. It's just purely been momentum. And luckily, we tick the momentum box, value, growth, income, uh, momentum. So that's that one. ETFs, well, the crypto ones are going through the roof, aren't they? I'll do a separate webinar on crypto and exchange traded funds. I don't know when, when I get time to do it. Uh, I'll, do it I'll do it for... Um, I'll try and do it for this month uh, at the very least. But you can see in terms of exchange trade funds, the ticker symbols, uh, emerging markets have been doing well for a bit. China seems to be coming back. I've got I've got my hands full with America, so I'm fine. I don't need to get into the Chinese market. But for those of you who want to, uh, the yin, I swear to God, that is 
mildly racist, I think. Anyway, the Chinese exchange traded fund called Yin. I don't know, or maybe it's just my mind. Um, they've also got no, it's not Yang. Oh, I get it, Yin and Yang. Sorry, it's just my conservative mind. Uh, Yin and Yan. Uh, <laughs> exchange trade funds you can put into Google and you'll find uh, in both of those. So year to date, how are we doing? The S&P is up 8.5%. The NASDAQ is up 8.28%. The Dow is up 3 And even the UK market, shock horror, is up 1.7%. Well done, UK. Okay. So uh, 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 it's like the, um, the slow kid at school. Well done, you. You get a badge for participating. Anyway, Seven times better, the S&P so far year to date in your SIP and ISA. Remember, you can hold these in your SIP and ISA. So when the race started at the start of the year, did I know communications were going to be the best? No, because I don't do a top-down approach. I look bottom-up. I look at the individual companies. Companies are factories that make money. As long as value, growth, income, cash flow, Saltino, Alpha are there, then I don't get it. Um, uh, Dollar Tree, I, I'll have a look later on at that one and see what it is. Um, not on this one, but I can have a look at it. Well, maybe I will. I, I'll pull it up. I'll put it up for you guys since two of you have asked about it. Um, okay, so give me a second. So communications uh, and technology, financials, and healthcare. Okay, so you've got all of those. They're all in there. Uh and did we know those sectors were going to do well? No. Okay, we because we don't do top down. Uh, what about factors? Well, momentum still leading the way. So is growth quite important? And as you know, we have to tick value, growth, income, momentum. We don't bet on which of these factors is going to be the most important. We don't know. When the horse is set off in January, we don't know which one's going to win. All we know is we're going to put our money on ones which tick all those boxes. Well, momentum ticks all those boxes because it's in momentum. Okay. Over the last year, the NASDAQ's now up 54%, 54%. Uh, okay. And the S&P's up 34 and the Dow up 22 right? Not bad. The UK market's up 11% over the last year. So, well, five times better is the NASDAQ. And that's how it's done. Uh, some of you asked about Dollar Tree. Uh, so the MACD was rising. Now, if the MAC, I'll come back to this later on. But if you look at the monthly MACD on any um, stock, if you want to get a quick idea, forget Putting put to one side value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, alpha. Okay, all of those boxes. If you just put all those to one side for a second and you just look at the monthly MACD, if it is flat like it is here, then that's okay. You certainly don't want to be getting in if the monthly MACD is falling. Well, I never do. Okay, if it's falling, I don't want to be getting in. If it's flat, that's okay. If it's rising, it's a little bit better. If it's rising and crossed its signal line, as you will know if you follow my broadcast, which this one hadn't, then that's even better. This one hadn't around here. Uh, uh, and sometimes what happens is it approaches it, kisses it, and then falls back before resuming upwards. And this one, well, since the MACD is falling at the moment, I wouldn't buy more of it now or buy any of it right now. I'd wait. Uh, but the good thing is it is oversold. And in the past, uh, when it's done that it's had some magnificent falls as you can see there uh and then dropped a bit more before so i suspect with this we're still looking at given how oversold it is i doubt we're looking at it going back to 103 which would be another 25 percent drop i suspect you're looking at it dropping a bit more as it did pass there maybe up to maybe about 120 ish before resuming upwards. And that's probably the quickest way to analyze anything is through that. Now, we will look at fundamentals in a second and charts in a second because I combine both. So we'll come back to some of that. Top 10 S&P 500 stocks just out of interest over the past month. What are they? They are these, okay? Uh, worst S&P 500 stocks, just so you know, and it's just purely for your information over the past month are these. Okay. And for the FTSE, uh, FTSE 350, the 350 largest UK companies over the past month, they are these, uh, the best performers over the past month, and the worst are these. Now, that is not a, a 
I mean, I'm just showing you what the data is, and we'll let's just look at the S and P 500 for now. So, what have we got with the S and P 500, and what do I think is more likely to happen? And what I've done, by the way, here is I've drawn um, performance over previous years. Okay, and basically, as a general rule of thumb, and there's no guarantee about this, but as a general rule of thumb, out of every seven years, two will be down years and five will be up years for the S&P, as a general rule of thumb. Okay, now let's deal with this at the moment where it, it is. The monthly MACD, which is a measure of momentum, is rising. Now, the, the best thing to do is to say, well, what happened when it was at similar levels previously? Uh, I had quite a bit to run. Okay, I had quite a bit to run, which is why without any guarantee, I've done that projection as my bull case, my bullish case projection. So I'm pretty comfortable with the S&P overall at the moment, okay? Uh, that's just the analysis based on momentum and what's happened in the past and, well, 18 books and 25 years of experience. That's where I am with that. By the way, frequency of rolling two-year S&P 500 returns since 1950. Average positive return, 32%. Positive returns, 88.5% of the time, uh, which sort of fits into that five years out of seven are up. Okay? Uh, so th that's pretty useful, actually, to see that. But it also tells you something really important. You really is important to miss those down years. Okay, worst return minus 45%, average negative return minus 18%, negative returns 11% of the time. And you might think, oh, it's only negative 11% of the time. I should just buy and hold this. No, maths isn't that simple. And I got the maths prize at school. Okay, it's really important to try and miss these negative years. We're not timing the market. And we can discuss a separate issue of what do you do when it's not a negative year, but you get a massive drop like that. But for the moment, let's just look at this one. Okay, and probably the best way that I could tell you is a shorthand, and I'm going to give you, well, I would say a secret, but I've written about it in here and 18 other books and in my Financial Times columns anyway. The best way I found to miss a negative year on the S&P is not I can see further or just polish my uh, genie lamp and my time travel machine or my, I was going to say golden balls, but um, no, glass balls. Uh, what do they call them? You know, the crystal balls. Right, got the wrong balls there. Crystal balls. Uh, I don't have any of those, right? And I don't want to really rely on the fact that, oh, maybe my IQ is bigger than everyone else's. That's not a good, reliable measure of I can see into the future further. No, I don't do any of that. I'll let you into a secret. If the monthly MACD is overbought, that means in the top quarter of this chart. See this part? If it's right up here, it's overbought. If it's falling, I'm worried. If it's falling and crosses below its own moving average, I don't want to be in the market. All right? Until at least it goes flat, preferably is rising. Sometimes it's too late to wait for it to cross its own signal line, as you can see that. Simple as that. That's it. That is it. Now, if that keeps me out of years like 2022, which it did, not just in the S&P, but actually the same pattern was on Meta, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Costco, oh God, pretty much everything across the board, uh, then you miss a negative year. And it's really, really important mathematically to miss a negative year. The buy and hold thing is you haven't, look, I haven't got the appetite to go through buy and hold. Uh, and you really need to avoid those if you can, even if you avoid half of that, even if you avoid half of it. So, you know, you just messed up the analysis and you just stayed out during that period because this was just falling, right? That bit. If you just missed half of it, you'll still do incredibly well, all right? Incredibly well because you'll be closer to that. Average positive return, 30%. People say to me, it's 30 to 40% realistic. I don't want to show them this and say, yeah, okay. Um, all right, so anyway, that's where you go. Now, FTSE 100, well, it's possibly going to, a bit like Dollar Tree, sort of approach its moving average and go lower, uh, which is what I suspect will happen rather than just an out-and-out -out breakout. Uh, and not least because the pound's appreciating, which means the oil-rich companies which make up the FTSE 100 are suddenly going to see uh, their profits, which are earned in US dollars, uh, look worse on the books. Somebody's going to cotton onto that in a second. And so that's 7% up since before that. Um, the Right, let's see. I'll answer some more of these uh, as well. 
Um, oh, Louise has just asked a brilliant, or Louise or Louis has just asked a brilliant question. Would you sell majority of your position if the market looks like it'll fall, or do you wait for a sell individual stocks? Um, a bit of both, actually. The, the individual stocks are the most important, but if I see that on the S&P, I know it's hard, it's highly unlikely I'm going to find some magical company which is going to buck the trend, okay, and go in the opposite direction because we know generally when the market's falling, there's an increased correlation between all stocks. In other words, this notion that, oh, I, but I learned in, mag in a magazine that um, different sectors means I'm diversified. Such bullshit, because all you need to do is look at the data, not that narrative, which is so outdated. It was true in 1963. But now the problem is <laughs> we live in a connected world. In other words, bottom line, Costco, the wholesaler, falls when Microsoft, the AI company, falls. Okay, simple as that. Uh, so what does that mean? That means if three or four of them are showing the same pattern, bet your bottom dollar the others aren't going to be able to resist that sandstorm coming their way. Anyway, 2022 is when it happened. You don't need to worry about it two years out of uh, seven. So don't get too worried. And don't forget, I do these updates on Telegram and on here. 40% um, of the time, the market's open. And not 40% of the days, the market's open. I do them twice a week. Market's open five days a week. 40% of the time, I'm already there watching it for you every single week, probably excluding Christmas week, but yeah. NASDAQ. Now, people say, oh, have I missed the boat? Is it too late? Well, you've missed the boat in the sense that the boat's set off here, but have you missed it? Well, no, because you can still get on if you wish, but you're not getting on here. I haven't got a time machine. The miss the boat thing's a bit weird. I think what they really mean is... Um, should I buy, hold, or sell? Well, let's look at it granularly. Let's look at the data rather than just some big statement, okay, and break it down uh, as if we we're answering an exam question. So, yeah, it's getting to more and more overbought. Now, in the past when it's been at those levels, it still had quite a way to go, okay? So, yes, you've missed this gain, but there still might be, without a guarantee, that much of a gain. All right, so I'm quite comfortable with NASDAQ 100 at the moment. So what's happening with Apple, Alpesh? Well, the reason I got out of half my holding in this is this. I kept to what I always say, which is if the MACD is falling beneath the signal line, i.e. its own moving average, which is the yellow, then I don't really want to be in the position. So why didn't I get out of 100%? Well, because all the others, Microsoft, for instance, and the S&P 500 and the other stocks aren't showing the same pattern. So if they were, then I definitely got out of 100%. So, and I know I'm going to buy back into Apple at some point. So I only got out of 50% at this point, okay, which is only 15% off the highs there. And, of course, given um, what we bought the new position in January 2023, um, which is, oh, God, there. So, okay, it's been, a, it's been an okay uh, return. What is that? 127 to 173, 50-odd percent, 40%. Apple since January 2023. So it's all right. It's okay. Uh, uh, you know, it's, just, it's fine. Now, what will happen? I'm not sure, but I'll continue holding this and I'll look to see if I get the other 50% out or not. I suspect it'll go to here, which I don't mind holding the other 50% for uh, and expect that. So that's my Apple. Okay. Uh, this is what the analysts think, in case you're wondering and you you care. I don't care what analysts think because they invariably, as I've written in the books and as financial literature shows they tend to be over optimistic why because they've got a conflict of interest what do they think they're going to tell you leave the market no they've got a bias towards telling you yeah buy everything send us the commissions please okay now that's apple uh alphabet blurred out version great investments program only uh only because otherwise my great investments program members might get upset uh microsoft i continue holding amazon oh she's missed the chart Oh, great. Thanks. She's missed the Microsoft chart. I'll show you the Microsoft chart. Don't worry. She's missed it, but I will not miss it for you. I will not do that to you. Microsoft. Okay, here it is. There's the Microsoft chart, which you missed. Um, so we have a data team and a graphics team. The graphics people put the charts together and one of them has missed that. Uh, so that's where we are on Microsoft, and I continue holding it. Now, the thing about Microsoft is this. Let me analyze it for you. That's the monthly. Is it flattening? Well, it's still rising. And the last time it did that, look. Look at this area here where my cross is. Look what happened. It dropped, dropped. So each one of these charts is, each one of these 
um, bars is one week. One, two, three, four, five, six. For about seven weeks, it was just pretty much going down. Well, six weeks, it was going down. So what I'm saying is, you could have six weeks of falls in this or go sideways. Don't panic, because when I look at that, I know you equally have that. So we might get one last fandango, as I keep calling it, one last rise up. That was from 305 to 345, which is, quick mathematics, 12.5%. Can somebody do the maths for me? 305 to 345 is about 13.5%. Okay, somebody please let me know in the chat box what the percentage that is. Um, so we still might have 13%, which is worth holding. Now, whilst she's gone and done this, I don't know why she's done that. Okay, let's just ease it down. Just um, calm down, lady. Uh, so um, let's just say closer to that is what might happen i'm going to put that in okay uh but we keep looking at this is why i do the broadcast on two days a week because i don't need to forecast that far ahead it's like driving a car do you really need to see whether there's fog all the way to london when you start off from leeds or do you just need to be able to look in front of you and say well i can still keep going amazon is on the blurry disney which i hold as you know and that's looking good that should have exploded to the upside um sometimes what happens is it just takes forever you get a hockey stick the price goes like this and then it goes like this and sometimes my students say to me hang on you say to hold for 12 months it's been five months and it's just gone sideways and i said yeah it's a bit like my daffodils mate planted them five months ago but they're still not rooted sometimes it's like that have a look at my youtube channel don't worry loads more to come have a look at my youtube channel um uh, uh ben i'll answer all of these in a second please uh, but thank you keep posting your questions and i will answer these in a second okay um uh duh, 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 duh. um Dej, i'll answer yours really quickly do i owe to reinvest the dividends yeah i just have it set on reinvest i'm really not bothered about an extra three or four percent in income and taking it out and just reinvest not really not bothered about it don't uh, i yeah um why the the ifa should be locked up so have a look at uh my youtube channel nvidia now this is really important you understand this lesson okay it is one of the most important things i'm going to teach you one of the things i taught you which was incredibly important was how i look at the s p and when to go into cash or be more inclined to be in cash and the monthly MACD, I've done that. Now, the next lesson I need to teach you is what do you do if you're lucky enough to have a stock like an NVIDIA or a Meta or a Bitcoin, which is ballistic? It is like a rocket. And, and don't tell me, oh, well, looking at the accounts or looking at the future growth, it's got nothing to do with that anymore. It is momentum driving it, okay? So what do you do if you end up with high momentum? And as you know, I look at this and if you read my book you'll know this as well my books you'll know this as well now you'll also know so let me please concentrate on this it's seriously important right you'll know when it was like this i said oh look it's overbought uh i'm worried okay we we'd had this if you follow my telegram I mean, you know we've had this since january 2023 okay uh not because i knew anything about ai at that time because in january 2023 most people weren't talking about ai uh, they were still talking about the fact that these graphics cards are used for Bitcoin mining. Incidentally, you've got the double whammy now, which people haven't caught up on. These graphics cards are not just used for data centers for mining Bitcoin, which they've been used for donkeys. That's what led to it rising up before. Um, they, so you've got the AI they use for and Bitcoin they use for. So now people just can't get enough of them because of both of those reasons. Because Bitcoin's gone to seventy thousand dollars a coin which means it's cheaper to mine them than ever it was in other words it means it makes more sense to pay even more money for these bloody graphics cards anyway um a good friend of mine is uh shankar Trivedi. we used to be he's um global head of marketing for nvidia and uh he and i were on uh, a board together the thai uk board the indus entrepreneurs in the uk back in the day and he was at nvidia back then uh 20 odd years ago had i known <laughs> back then he must be a billionaire by now and i know back then nvidia was going to be a big company <sighs> i wish i didn't know i didn't know well, what i know is so what happens why didn't we get out there that's the first lesson i want to teach you okay and why are we still able to hold on here happily and how do we make our thought process so two ways one it's got nothing to do with the news it's got nothing to do with the accounts by that stage okay we got in here and, and number three why did we get in here so let's start off with number three first 
We got in there, and you'll know exactly why if you're on my program, because, well, first of all, momentum was flat, so there was no, re it wasn't falling, so there's no reason not to. Don't worry about that. Value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, alpha, it was all green on our approved filtered list. Okay, it was all green. So if it's all green, we had few we had no reason not to get in. And what do I mean by all green? As you know, we go through 10,000 um, equities. Let me just put it in to the non-confidential part. Okay, this is the non-confidential part. All of these companies we go through, none of these will be suitable for my portfolio. And it was all green in these first five columns. So it was eligible to be in. And also it was oversold, as you can see there. So it looked attractive. Did I know it was going to go up 250%? in a year? No, of course not. Because if I did, I would have gone to Ladbrokes and they would have made me odds of a thousand to one that it's going to go up 250% because they would have thought I was insane. And I would have made a trillion. Okay. And I would only have bought that and nothing else. I would have bought t-shirts, right? So that's why we bought. It ticked all the boxes, value, growth, income, cash flow. So why did we not exit here? Well, because our rule is really simple. Our rule is really simple with any portfolio there it is has it been 12 months no and and has it fallen 25 percent from the peak no it hadn't okay so there was no reason to exit right some people go oh i got out because i was afraid it was going to fall Ooh, had it no oh okay so you got a fear of heights or something you got vertigo now i thought it was going to fall but until it did there's no reason to exit and then guess what happened? It didn't. Sorry for the high thing. It kept going up. Now, this was one where it keeps going up. There's no reason to sell it. Even the 12-month rule, no reason to sell it. Just keep holding. And it keeps bloody going up. Okay. Now, do I think at some point it's going to fall? Yeah. When? I don't know. But what I know is unless it falls, whether it's 25% or let's just say once it falls 10%, let's you and I talk. Again, we're working out, oh, I'll do the broadcast on Wednesday and Fridays anyway. But thank you very much, 250% return on my pension. Do I feel stupid? Yes, because I wish I'd just put everything in there and gone to Ladbrokes and got odds on it. Anyway, Tesla, as you know, same thing with NVIDIA. It had gone up. Uh, we got in in January of last year, but exited in October of last year after they had some bad results. And I, it was a special situation. It wasn't all greens. It was a special situation. And I said, well, look, the MACD is falling. It's below the signal line. I want to get rid of some equities. I might as well get rid of this because we've had such a big fat gain anyway uh, over that period. So we got out. But why we continued looking at it? I keep saying each week, well, because you guys like talking about it. It's a bellwether. So I continue. I do bellwethers on here. And for the moment, it's not going to be a special situation anytime soon. Uh, so. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it right now. Uh, Meta, great investments program only. NXP semiconductor, I continue uh, buying. So we'll go a bit quicker now. Uh, I continue like it. That's what I expect. So no issues there. Qualcomm, you know, I'll worry about it when it gets closer to there. But thank you very much, Qualcomm. That looks like it's going to go through. Now, that was another one, which, bloody hell, you get in. What happens the very next week? Flipping drops. And I get messages going, oh, it's dropped. And I said, well, yeah, give it a year. Anyway, since then, it's done that. Service now, as you know, I exited prematurely, probably uh, alongside Apple, just because oh, I want to reduce a little bit of. I mean, we had a massive. I think it was like over a hundred percent gain. Okay, so I won't even need to show that in future because I've just told you. Um, the special situation stuff still have the twelve month rule. Okay, and that'll be on Telegram. Netflix, I don't own, as you know, and people go, "Oh, you missed a good one there." Well, no, th this was to show you that the stuff we just don't own. I'm flexing, um, th and got in belatedly, as in started covering it only here, not down here, only here, up here. After it had some, after listen to me, after it had some great results. So this whole notion of how'd you miss the boat? Well, I don't care about the bloody boat. I'll make a new boat. So didn't buy it because I can't buy everything. As you know, I never bought it. Okay, just so you know. Uh, and it was after results. So if you go back, you'll see this. Um, and it's been going up and up and up alongside this. Fine. Great. That's it. How much further will it go? What's your target? I don't have a target. How much further? I don't know. If it drops X, then I'd suggest you sell Y, or I'll tell you anyway on these broadcasts. I didn't even own it. I'm just showboating now. Talk about missing boats. Um, but to give you a bit of humility, that's the MAC. Look, flat, 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 nothing. Absolutely bloody nothing. Now, Paresh, who works with me, 
has bought this and he likes it and he's excited. I think it went up 4% today. Um, I'd rather wait. He's, he used to be a floor trader on the London International Financial Futures Exchange and he, was, he did all the strategies for a $2 billion hedge fund called Marble Bar Asset Management. And so he, I don't know, maybe he takes more risk than I do. Uh, I'm going to go through more stuff. Pensions, Scottish Investment Trust, Bailey Gifford, Royal London, a whole bunch of others I've done on my YouTube. I've had a million views on my YouTube channel already. So what about General Electric? Another one I do not own, popular with hedge funds. Uh, and the reason I didn't own it, just to show you whether you want to call it my infallibility, whatever you want to call it. See, I thought it was overbought because of the MACD. Yet, I knew it was popular with hedge funds because we had the data. And look at it. It's just shot up. I didn't buy it. Okay? You'll know this because you're following me on this every week. Popular with hedge funds, not for me. General Electric, and yet it shot up. So what I'm saying is there are other approaches that I might not be using, which I don't use rather, which could still see stocks go up. So it's not that mine's the only way, case in point. But I just wanted to show it. I actually thought I was the one who's going to be right and this was going to fall. I even said, who's going to be right, me or the hedge funds? Well, actually, it looks like the bloody hedge funds were on that one. But it doesn't matter. It didn't cost me anything other than a blush. Um, Cisco is another one which is popular with hedge funds. Not for me. Uh, it's gone sideways a bit, but, you know, and it's not for me. I don't own it, just so you know, okay? Uh, I got that one that little beauty. Like I said, on the YouTube channel, you want my playlist, which says why your pension is performing poorly. Okay. And please do check because I'm a top voice now, top voice on LinkedIn, because you will get a whole load more. There's more I want to cover because I want to cover your questions and I can check more of the uh, stocks and so on. So do check me on, check me out on LinkedIn. It's the only place I get checked out at my age anymore. Not even my wife around the house checks me out anymore. <sighs> We'll talk about that separately, and we'll do a separate webinar on that. Client review, uh, there's loads of those. Now, I want to touch upon some of these issues on poor performance. Before I do, and how to avoid it, okay, and how IFAs do a spray and pray and underperformance, um, I want to answer one or two more questions. Do you think upside to MSMCI? So I'm going to do something I don't normally do for you guys. SMCI. Uh, whoops. SMCI. I'm going to take in questions from the audience. Well, not just questions. MCI. Uh, Super Micro. So let me analyze Super Micro for you. So Super Micro was one of ours from the program, okay? And as you can see, it went through the roof because it's a Bitcoin play. Um, and did I expect it was going to do that much? No, I didn't. I didn't think it was going to give me a bloody five-fold return, all right? Um, so what do I think? Same analysis as before. What do you do? What, what do you do when anything's going ballistic and vertical and it's got nothing to do with seeing into the future, news, um, financials, profit and loss accounts? Because if you could do that, right, by looking at narrative and stories, you must be a genius. All you can do when there's momentum like that is if it falls X percent, e.g. 10 percent, you will sell Y percent. So if it falls 10 percent, I want you to write this down, a piece of paper. If it falls 10 percent from the highest it's been since you bought it, so from the highest it's been, okay, if it falls 10 percent, how much will you sell based on your risk appetite? You're trying to see the future. Stop trying to see the future. You can't. Trust me. One thing I'll guarantee, you can't see the future. All right? Just so you know. You might think you can. Go speak to an astrologer. They'll tell you. You can't see the future. Only they can. Right? If it drops 10%, how much do you want to sell based on your risk appetite? If it drops 15 how much do you want to sell? If it drops 20 how much do you want to sell based on your risk appetite? Right? And you might even fill those in when it does those drops. So relax. Stop trying to see the what will Super Micro do? I don't know. What would you do, Alpesh? If it drops 10%, I'll let you know. Well, I'll let my great investments program people know. I won't actually let you know. Okay. Um, hi, Alpesh. What do you think about cover? Okay, I'm going to do cover, and then I'm going to answer a few more questions. Okay, cover group. Um, cover rings a bell. Was that, was that one of mine? It rings a bell. Um, I can't even see the MACD on that, so I can't remember. Uh, I can't really analyze that one because I can't see the, the thing on it. So I do the same rule. It's going ballistic, so 10-10 rule. That's what I think about it. Um, can you please do a tutorial on how you would find all the hard-to-find value ratios for SMS as an example for the future? Kishan, it's a good question. I will do that. The other question I'm going to answer once I go through a bit more of this, I'm going to dip in and out. Um, how do I get the software that you use to view the info? So, Ben, um, 
this software I'll make sure you can see me excuse me a second this software i think is that what you mean this is excel now you've asked me how do i get all the data Ugh, exchanges um that's the problem getting hold of data is quite difficult there might be quite a bit of free data on yahoo finance okay most people the data isn't enough it's data plus knowledge which equals confidence Okay, so they usually want access to me at the same time. Um, you might get some of the data, I think, on Yahoo Finance. I'd written about it in my books, and then quite a few companies that were providing data went bust. So that was the unfortunate thing. I mean, the stock exchanges provide it, but they provide it to institutions uh, on that. So let's talk a bit more about this, okay, and why do fund managers underperform? Fund managers underperform because I'm going to show you something which is incredibly uh, obvious and educational and probably, again, the, the, the right up there with the most important things I've taught you. I, oh, did I? With Carver, did I do that? Did I just mess it up because of that? No, 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 that's not it. I thought I messed something up. Um, so with this, if we look at Meta, okay, which, as you know, I hold. Would I buy more? No, because it's overbought, but I continue holding what I've got, okay, and would I sell? Not yet. Oh, if you're looking at this, um, this is, it's there, it's written there, it's on the screen, Trend Spider. But that costs a thousand pounds a year. Don't buy that. I quite like this. I try and use retail platforms. You can do this for free, by the way. You can set it up on Yahoo Finance for free. Okay. Um, it's just that I quite like this, so I don't mind paying um, this, but for free on Yahoo Finance. Uh, they'll set up the MACD and provide you this data. Do it for free. I mean, why do you want to pay money to Trend Spider? Uh, so anyway, what do we have here? Now, why do fund managers underperform? See that, and why does buy and hold stink, right, for this reason? And this meta example is really good. Look at this. For six years, that's 2016 here. For six years, the market kept just going up and up and up and up. All the fund managers like Scottish Mortgage, Draw London, Bailey Gifford, uh, Fonsmith said, aren't we clever? No, you're not. When the tide's rising, all boats rise. What can you do when the tide falls? So the, as Warren Buffett said, when the tide falls, you see who's been swimming without trunks on, and all the fund managers do. Fund managers can't just go 100% into cash and charge you fees. They're not allowed by the regulators. They can do about 5% in cash. IFAs are not going to say to you, stop using me for a year, just put your money in a bank account because they're not going to put food on their table and be able to pay their kids' school fees if they say you that. Right, so they're never going to say that. For us, it was really simple. Meta and a whole load of others, the MACD had just crossed below. That happens once every, well, once or twice every seven years, okay? And it happened across a multitude of stocks. So I said in January, I'll wait till my February list. February, it was like, oh, crap, I'll wait till my March list. March, I said, I'll wait till my April list. April, I said, I'll wait till my May list, and so on and so forth. And it basically became until the bloody new year well, we just had to take, we, we, it was raining outside. We stood inside. Well, Arpesh, couldn't you have danced between the raindrops and not got wet by finding companies that hadn't been invented that went up and were still safe? No, because those companies hadn't been invented. Okay, in 2022, you went inside. You couldn't dance between the raindrops, right? Unless you wanted to buy ye oldy South Sea Shipping Company oil exploration, which set up the week before. Yeah, in other words, you wanted to go to Vegas. Right. Um, and by January 2023, it was easy because m momentum was fine and this was value growth, income cash flow, and it was rising. So, what happened to fund managers? Well, fund managers like Scottish Mortgage lost 50% of your pension and they're supposed to be safe. IFA kept defending them, saying, well, you know, boom, what to do? Uh, C'est la vie, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And of course, the buy and holders who said, oh, look, it went back to where it was. No, it didn't. Look at that 18-month period. You got a 0% return. We, over that 18-month period, got a 250% return. Why 250%? Well, because that went up 250 bloody percent. Go look at my Telegram and YouTube videos, okay? And because we missed this fall. There's an old saying in the market. The market takes the stairs on the way up, takes ages to go up, takes the elevator on the way down, easily falls. 80% that dropped. People go, oh, but you could just buy and hold. No, because you would have got a 0% return over 18 months when other people, like us, got 250%. Did I know it was going to drop 80%? No. Did I know it was going to be a down year? Nope. Why did I sell then if I didn't know? Well, because that happened, and it's usually a good idea not to be in when that happens. 
past experience teaches me. Is it guaranteed to fall when that happens? No. If it was guaranteed, I would have gone to Ladbrokes and put my mother-in-law on a bet, right? Solder. Put it on a bet. That went up 250. Uh, do I know it's going to go up 250? No. <laughs> no. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a vision. I didn't sort of read tea leaves. I thought it might go up a little bit. Look good. I think it's going to go up 250 bloody percent. Otherwise, I would have gone to Ladbrokes. Let's be honest. You would too. Okay, so just letting you know uh, with that. Now, let's go back to all of this. That's why fund managers underperform in a, in a simple sort of statement, right? Hold on too long, not knowing when to let go. 12-month rule is what we have, and if it falls X, you sell Y. And if you don't know what X and Y should be, then if it fall, 12 months are up, or if it falls 25%, the highest it's been since you bought it. Why those rules? Because they're objective. We can't argue about it. You and I, I can put in front of you the American Constitution, which states all men are created equal, and we will disagree whether or not slavery is legal. You'll say it is, and I'll say, no, it's not, because look at that, right? I can show you the Middle East conflict, and you and I will disagree who's right and who's wrong, or everybody's right, everybody's wrong, whatever. You can't disagree what with numbers. What is 25% from the highest it's been since you bought it? You and I cannot disagree on that unless you are absolutely numerically illiterate, in which case you didn't even manage to get onto this webinar. Okay? That's why I make it idiot-proof. Because if I make it anything other than that, <laughs> you know what they say? Yeah, an idiot's going to come along and try and do it. IFA giving 0% returns. The NASDAQ was up 55% last year. So many of you have asked me, what do I say to my IFA? Mm, get lost get a new job. Uh, what do I say? Give me my money back? Give my fees back? Why are you rubbish? Why are you saying 4.5% per year when the NASDAQ was up 55% last year, the S&P 500 25% last year? Okay. What are you going to do in a year like 2022? Ask them that. Why do you think Microsoft's a risky company when its volatility is less than 99% of other companies out there? Why do you, why do you keep getting kickbacks for picking funds? Doesn't that make you biased and a conflict of interest with me? Would you ever tell me to only hold cash like in 2022 and not pay your fees? Ask them those questions, okay? Uh, so is 40% realistic? Well, the markets are becoming a bit more like weather. They're getting a bit extreme. It's going to be realistic only if these things happen. Only if these things happen. If the market tailwind, like in 2021 and 2023, like I said last year, NASDAQ up 55%. You didn't have to be clever to be able to make money last year. But only after the event did we know that. I didn't know it was going to go up 55%. Statistically, highly unlikely. Um, okay. High Sortino. In other words, high returns, high average returns, and very low downside risk of missing them. Okay. Historically, the past is not guarantee of the future, but it's a pretty good guide. You know, high alpha stocks, in other words, Market goes up, they tend to go up more. Market falls, they tend not to fall as far. Why? Because they tick the value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino boxes. They're resilient companies, right? Not UK, because you just don't have enough stocks. Not emerging markets, because you really are throwing darts and hoping to pick something which will be good. USA is giving you ample, ample companies to choose from. Ask Warren Buffett. Gets to be the world's richest man just investing in American companies right? If you can go to cash in bad years, that's critically important. I hope I've shown why and how, why it's important and how to do it. If you monitor once a fortnight, I mean, I do, I mean, if you don't look at it and the market bottom falls out, then don't say, whoa, how come it didn't keep going up? It's not a bloody hot air balloon, even those fall. If good years make up for bads, well, five years out of seven. Now, if every year now, from now till eternity, the market only falls, you and I are screwed. If croaky, i.e. cash return on capital invested, because Goldman Sachs research shows through their quantum division 30% per annum, hold for 12 months, then reevaluate. Why? Because we're looking to buy undervalued companies which are growing, uh, like fruit. They're unripened when we start off, they get overripe and fall off afterwards. If you sell anything which dropped 25% from the peak, I've shown you why that's important, particularly because the kind of companies we have are the type which should skyrocket, because we're not looking at valuation alone, we're looking at under valued companies with high growth and they might be a bit well valued but if the growth makes up for it then you can still have it and that's what the value growth income and the ticking all comes into more questions do you actually go into cash or do you hold t-bills high interest um kishan at the moment i'll give you an example so with my cash at the moment with wise bank gets me 4.9 percent because they sweep it into um jp morgan's 
bonds or whatever they do but it's instant access it's 4.9 percent. so i don't actually do that i can't be bothered with bonds i get them to do it and it's just swept across uh there are other banks but they're a lot easier than um say lloyd's and hsbc who i also bank with i used to bank with uh bonk genre to luxembourg bonk genre because it just sounded flash but uh internax uh, but they no longer exist. They got taken over. And I used to bank with Merrill Lynch HSBC when they had a joint venture, and they no longer exist. They became HSBC. So anyway, 20% growth. This is typical. I checked my pension with legal in general, My provided by my employer, God help you, 20% between 2012 and 2022. This is common. This is why I'm going to answer some more questions in a second. Okay, so she got on a hundred thousand. That lady who emailed me got a hundred thousand. She got twenty percent over ten years. Over the same ten years, the Nasdaq one hundred was up three hundred eighty-two percent. She could have put it that in a SIP, an ISA. Okay, uh, would have given her four hundred eighty-two thousand. Let's say she thought that was too risky. S&P 500, five hundred large American companies. I'm not talking about the Magic Seven. I'm talking about. 500 large American companies. Well, that would have given 166% return. She would have had 266K. Given the UK, that's what the problem was. She got £24,000 extra on 100K after 10 years. After 10 years. Okay, and that came to me just in December. After 10 years. That's what's happening in our pension industry. Martin Lewis won't cover this. And the reason he won't cover it, and he's written to me on why he won't cover it, because he thinks anything to do with the stock market is like horse... Uh, betting. So he's more than happy to be part of this and say, yeah, just shove it in pension funds. Don't know what's going on, mate, despite selling his company for several hundred million. He knows full well what sh- st- what stock sales do for you. Right, social media or whatever else you get your stocks from. I actually put 10,000 in there. Need to take value, income, cash flow, 15 to 40 stocks, hold for 12 months. If it drops 25%, that's the simpler rule, but MACD etc. is the more complicated, sophisticated one. And that's it. And then go to bed. So how did we do last year? Now, last year was exceptional. It might never happen in my life ever again. And it is certainly one thing I can guarantee about last year. I won't repeat it ever again, probably. Let's just make that assumption. Because it was stupid last year. But the market seems to be delivering this more. Now, I could, if I'm optimistic, but I'm biased because I'm invested in the market, I could say, whoa, with AI and everything else, it's going to continue happening. But I'm biased. So I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to assume, nope, last year was a one-off. The market was up 25% on the S&P. We, I can't take credit for that. I didn't invent those companies. I just rode the coattails. The following are US companies. This is how we did. We do select LSE, London Stock Exchange, European ones, but I buy from the US part of my list. Okay. They're on our further filtered final list, which is the PowerPoint we give clients each month, which is this one. Make sure you're all on here still. Yeah, which is that one. You can see it. Okay. Um, there were the ones where the momentum was in place. I'm sort of stating the obvious here for my clients. They'll know what I'm talking about. That was rising. They include the quality five, which are the two M's and the three A's last year. Uh, Meta, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and special situations from January. It did not, it was only January to December, I'm about to tell you the performance. I'm not saying what happened, I don't know, March to December. There were periods when, you know, or January to October, for instance, and then pro rata it up, annualize it, which is what fund managers do because they're cheating. Uh, No, this is literally what happened from the picks from January to December. So it doesn't include Costco, Intel, Adobe, because they were bought during the course of the year. and doesn't include my overweighting in the two M's and the three A's. And it doesn't include the leverage. If you watch me on Telegram, you know I leverage on the two A's and the three M's for most of last year. It doesn't include that. It just assumes same amount of money in everything. Okay, so... We actually did a bit better than this, but that that's irrelevant. Uh, it wasn't a typical year. Much of 2022, for instance, was in cash. Does not mean any will be held in 2024. Um, and this is what happened. Now, there's some important lessons here. Uh, somebody said, yeah, but if you remove the good ones, you don't have any good ones. Seriously. Um, there's a great book I recommend people read. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's called Thinking About Thinking by Anthony Flew. Um, when I first started my degree, one of the subjects was logic, and it's a great book on logic. Uh, it also stops you arguing with people on Twitter. Right. There we go. 
So that was it. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Yes, there are some outliers. That's what happens. That's why you don't pick one stock. If you look at any portfolio, you'll have a normal distribution curve with a fat tail at that end. That's what you want. You don't want a fat tail at this end, the losing end. How do you avoid it? You have that 25% rule. You want this to be as high as possible. How do you do that? Value, growth, income. So you want your average to be as high as possible by value, growth, income. You want a fat tail by not having just one stock, okay? And you avoid this by having the 25% rule. Boom, job done. If you've used the same approach, Alpesh, how come tapestry went down in a year where the NASDAQ went up 55%? You idiot, Alpesh. Well, that's why we didn't just have one stock. Tapestry, thank God. Okay, thank God we didn't have this, we didn't have this, we didn't have this. It was an 80% return in the end. You can see why I'm saying it's never going to happen again uh because i'd soon be the richest man in the world if it happened and i just don't think i'm destined to be the richest man in the world 36 46 uh 48 55 same approach so it shows you the distribution of returns the disparity it is that it is always that what you're making the mistake thinking is that it's going to be this just 200 percent nope it ain't uh, Tapestry is now top performing stock for. Is it? Well, sorry, we got out of it, Mitesh. Uh, <laughs> you kidding? Seriously, Mitesh, are you lying? Is Tapestry the top performing? We're not in it. So now you know. Bloody hell. This guy's too honest. Um, I'm not in Tapestry. I didn't know it was the top before we started. Bloody got out of it because 12 month rule and it was down minus 1%. So there you go flipping egg uh but anyway these were some of them and um that's how what happened uh this is how you sack your wealth manager they get really annoyed they get really annoyed. please don't mention my name i've got enough bloody ifas messaging and go leave us alone leave us alone okay just pack it in uh less than eight percent return over white months no uh neil i better read that in a second what would you recommend with regards to non-starters i.e stocks same rule 12 months or if it drops x percent uh, no, 12-month rule, sorry, because I'll tell you what will happen. Oh, it's been eight months, Arpej. It's not moved. What shall I do? And then you chase the next one, and then you chase the next one. Just, you'll be, it, it, it's, it's, it, don't do it. It's not worth the effort. Um, uh, that's how you can open a SIP. You can go with Barclays. You can do it with Hargreaves, Nasdaq, AJBL, anybody. I'm not sponsored by Barclays. I'm just saying it's so easy to open a SIP if you haven't done it. Start with a bank payment or transfer your old pensions. They actually do it for you, and they explain everything in beautiful language. Whether it's a Barclays or a um, free trade or a interactive investor or Saxo, IG, they all do SIPs, I believe, or free trade. This is free trade. Don't care which one you use. Um, not sponsored or anything by any of them. This whole bunch of them. You might think that these costs mean go with free trade. No. Um, what you should do, here's a tip. Um, whatever you're going to buy, typically. So you might say, I'm going to buy 5,000 pounds of stock generally. So pick a stock. Microsoft, okay, for argument's sake, then call them up or email them and say, how much will it cost me to buy £5,000 worth? The reason is there's no point knowing that, oh, actually, if you buy a million pounds worth, that's what you get. There's no point knowing what it's what the cost of something is that you're not going to be doing, right? So actually, just call them up and say which one. And to be honest, they're much of a muchness. They really are, usually because the back-end clearing, which is where most of their costs come from, because staff costs are pretty much flat. <laughs> It's all pretty much the same cost for all of them. It's just a white label front end, this stuff. Uh, that's how you you know you put the company in. You say buy five hundred pounds worth, and you hit that. Even if it's an American company, you can say five hundred pounds worth. All right. Uh, we are continuing with some of the AI picks. It's more for fun. I'll show you. Actually, let me share with you the AI picks. Don't buy these because AI did them for last month, and they were all pretty much all overbought. I'm going to share these with you. I wouldn't normally share this. So we asked AI. Now, what was the prompt I asked AI? Okay, what I asked AI was this. Imagine you've read all the Nobel Prize winning literature on what moves stock prices, uh, including from the specific economists and you are the world's greatest stock picker you've read all the works of uh warren buffett eugene famer daniel Kahneman, blah 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 uh here's data so we uploaded the excel spreadsheet that you can see there and added more data i want you to work out and weigh which factor should be the most important and then i want you to tell me the best stocks that i should own this is what it came up with so 
I don't know if it's going to be good. You can record it and then look it back. But warning, these are all overbought. Pretty much all of them are overbought. You can video record this on your phone if you wish. Okay, so I wouldn't buy these. They're overbought. And you can see the warnings. Matador wasn't, but it's falling. I mean, that's a bit like Dollar Tree. It's below the signal line. It's flat to below. That could easily go up and then drop again. Okay. Um, it picked this, which isn't overbought, right? Overbought, 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 overbought. That's AI. That's AI. None of these I would want. Uh, it picked this. Now, we'd had that super micro not then actually no this is march so this is march i was gonna say actually that's good if it done it in january it'd been great but it didn't it did it in march so you know uh overbought overbought uh autozone isn't overbought but again it's a bit like dollar tree look it's midway and flat could fall faster now overbought peabody <laughs> bit like dollar tree you see what i mean um, so anyway, that's enough for you right there. So that was the AI stuff, just out of interest. Um, be careful when you buy into name recognition. This is Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, popular amongst people. It dropped 50% in 2022, and it hasn't recovered. Okay, that's 2020. Well, it's not recovered in March, 2020. And if they say to you, oh, no, no, we've recovered, we're really good, ask them, what's your performance between January 2022 and end of 2023? Okay. When the NASDAQ in 2023 went up 55%, right? So just be wary of that. This is what you're doing. You need to tick the valuation box, the growth box, the income box. Otherwise, you've not done your due diligence, momentum box. And statistically, you need high Sortino, high alpha. If you don't do all of those, then you're risking ignorance, right? All of those and monitoring frequently, I once once every fortnight. It's your pension, for God's sake. So you should. 12-month holding, 15 to 40 stocks, drops 25% from the high. That's a simple strategy. I've shown you the more sophisticated version of that. I better go soon. Um, most of my students will have about 20 stocks. I know Warren Buffett has most of his money in his top eight picks. So does Bill Gates. They're billionaires. I can't take that kind of risk still. I'd like to have it in 20 uh, stocks, roughly. Now, assume you plan to invest over 10 years. And with my help, you make 20% per annum, which is pretty reasonable given what you've seen i mean only on american stocks obviously uh let's say you got 100k and you plan to add a bit of money well you should have a million over 10 years simple as that that'd be the maths it's not going to work like that because it'll probably end up doing this that's life the idea is by this stage within 10 years you're making over 100 grand just from the passive income you're not doing it in year one over 100 years uh, over 100 years over 10 years 100 grand okay that's the idea that's the point of it uh oh that was one of my book launches so alpishpital.com forward slash to download uh this book not all of them i'm not gonna let you download all of them but that one and i really recommend that one okay because that's got all the nobel prize winning literature and everything that i've taught you and why and all the rest of it pargrave mcmillan published it and i'll tell you who reviewed it and it's given on the jacket cover, Bernard Oppity, who's the founder of Centaurus Capital, it's a $2 billion hedge fund, Philip Hampshire, Bloomberg TV, Peter Temple, Financial Times uh, uh, as well, and Peter Critis, who is Lord Critis now, chairman of CMC Group uh, as well. Okay, and Traders Magazine, amongst others, and a whole bunch of others, and they all said, fantastic, right? And you can download it for free. Okay. Um, my bottom line is this. You can be better than overpaid fund managers. That's me winning the competition. I've been doing this a long time. It's me winning that competition in the Financial Times to forecast the markets. Okay, that's me on the front cover of that. I met Lord Lee, by the way, if anybody knows Lord Lee. He wasn't Lord Lee then. He used to have the column near mine, and they made him a bloody peer. Writing in a newspaper. Who'd have thought it? Uh, that's me winning it. That's Neil Bloody Woodford. Watch out. Look at data, not narrative. The narrative was, he's a handsome man with a chiseled jaw. Give him nine billion pounds. The data was, he's as good as Jasper the cat and was out by 50% on what the market would do in a year. I was out by 0.5%. Shall I tell you how? I'll tell you a secret. I use the approach that I've just shown you today. I haven't changed it pretty lazy didn't change the approach didn't need to worked in 2004 it's worked ever since Shh, don't tell anyone um but we knew he was an idiot back then and still proves to be 
Yeah, he's been looking after people's pensions. Um, so that's Warren Buffett's portfolio. If you want to have a look at it, take a picture if you wish. Don't just go and buy it. That's Bill Gates's. Don't just go and buy it just because they've got it. But my point is, after their eighth holding, they've got less than 3% of their money in it. In this case, less than 2% after the eighth holding. Concentration. Put all your eggs in one basket. Watch the basket. Right? Uh, this is from Goldman Sachs. That's the thing about croaky that I told you about. So that's the slide. I was having lunch with Jim O'Neill. Now, Lord O'Neill. But yeah, everybody gets made up here. Lord O'Neill, uh, who then subsequently became my chairman on Chatham House when I was on the investment committee there. Uh, so anyway, quantum database. This is the research they found. 30% per annum cash return on capital invested. Uh, and that I took the slides. I took the bloody slides because I, I want to be like their richest clients. Simple as that. This I've shown you earlier. Um, this, don't worry about that so much. Now, this is a typical portfolio. Just This is what your IFA does. A load of UK companies that do bloody nothing because there's too many gaps in what they produce and then a whole bunch of stocks and funds and kickbacks for the IFA, right? I tell you, I'm going to tell you another secret, right? For the wealth managers and the IFAs and why they give you so many of these. Okay. And it's this. Let's say the IFA only bought you this one, right? They're going to get kickback of, let's say, a thousand pounds for argument's sake. Okay. Let's say they put all your money in there. The kickback's still going to be capped at a thousand pounds. All right. It's not going to be a percentage usually. It's going, there's going to be some kind of cap, right? They're going to get a thousand pounds. Let's say instead they put it into all of these. They're going to get a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, depending on how much money you've got and how much you put in. But let's say that hits the minimum for the kickback, right? They're going to get, they're going to get a lot more. That's why. That's how the capping system leads to poorer behavior. You think, oh, if it's capped, that's better for me. No, because it's capped, they'll put it into loads of crap. If it wasn't capped, perversely, you might just get one of these and that would be fine. It, you know, it's just how the financial markets work. They do things and it has the exact opposite consequence. This is typical as well. This is sort of a question somebody had sent in. Um, and, you know, this guy, Bruin Dolphin, he's with, and he said over 1,000 different companies, scattergun effect. I mean, that's typical and that's another one. And that came in December as well. I've got loads more since. Okay, this is another typical portfolio. He's got one or two good ones, but it's been ruined by having too much because he doesn't know what he's doing himself. So he'd done this himself. We analyzed it and we said, look, you've got too many gaps, mate. Um, for those who want to know about the program, I'm going to answer some questions now. I'll tell you a bit more in the last 10 minutes, which will be very soon. Uh, that's the holy grail. If you want access to all the data and us to do all the work for you. Why were you saying those AI pick stocks were overbought? What were you basing that on the MACD? It was overbought, which is something I explained earlier in the webinar, what overbought means on the MACD. Would you invest in the NASDAQ or the, over the S&P if you were in your mid-20s? Um all other things being equal, Beck, and it's not financial advice, yes. Okay, because it's more technology-rich and technology is the future. Uh, and it's more concentrated. And the NASDAQ 100 rather than the NASDAQ. Um, but really, it's the ability to stay out of the market because the NASDAQ 100 can drop 50% in a year. So uh, I've got a caveat that. Tapestry is now performing. Uh, Neil, um, oh, no, we did that one. Are you allowed to go into cash if you go into a SIP for your pension? Yeah, of course you can going to a sip you can do whatever you want uh having watched arbitrage for three months so i moved to sip and i'm now at nine percent a month thank you um and that's just from watching me um uh but pff, not do you know what will in the good old days when i used to do my bloomberg show 25 years ago or my financial times column people would say watch you i've made some money i'll buy you a drink and i'd say i'm teetotal no thanks well a thanks. All I got is a thanks. Could at least buy me a Diet Coke, mate. I'll let you know when the next event is. I'm going to share that comment. Thank you very much, though. Um, well, do you actually go into... Oh, I think I answered that. Go pre fully agree, Ralph. As I've now met two in my life. They steal your money and clearly after hidden commissions. Um, a rather nice chap, an IFA, has messaged me today and said, look, uh, I, I hear you giving us uh, having a go at us. Can we have a chat, see how we can improve? Really decent of him. And I'm going to have a chat with him and just say, look, what would you do in these circumstances? Because, um, you know, uh, um, I don't want to demonize them. Uh, she used to work for me. 
she left university, joined me on July the 16th, 2006, I think, or seven, worked for me for two years, and then moved to Newton Asset Management. She read English at university. In those two years, she was my secretary. Look, oh, there you go, English literature. Do you know, I always say, I think it was English language, I think it was English language, it's bloody written there, English literature. Um, so she, um, she joined in 2010, so she must have worked for me in... 20 2008 there you go 2008 to 2010 and in all her sec filings she talks about how she started a career with my firm and she now manages billions my point is english literature it's fine i can get you managing billions even if you're my secretary but you'll have to be my secretary for two years um is the 25 percent fall rule 20 percent of the whole value or 25 percent of what it increased since it was bought uh, I don't think I understand what you're saying. So it's 25% from the high since you bought it. Um, so, oh, sorry. Whatever the price is today, let's say you bought it at 100. Now it's at 200. Um, it's If it drops 25%, I think I see what you mean. Uh, 25%, not the value since you bought it. Well, you could do that. But 25% from 200. So that's quite a drop, isn't it? And you might say, bugger that. I'll only do it from the 100 it's gained, i.e. 25 down, not 25 of 200, but 25 of the 100 it's gained. Could be one way of doing it. You can do either, depending if you're more risk averse or not. Um, uh, uh, Trading View has decent free data. I didn't know. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'm just moving my... Oh, God, I should do more of these. Um, look. These are the typical people who come to me. They are 30, 40, 50 year olds, sometimes 60, looking at their pensions, annoyed with underperformance. They've been getting 4.5% for bloody donkeys. They've either got too many stocks, too few. They don't know what to do. They want handholding because uh, they're afraid of taking it on themselves. I have been doing this since donkeys. I mean, I used to look like that once. I know, hard to believe. I remember that photo being taken. 10 Dale Close. OX2. That's where it was taken. Um, that's me. That's winning competition. I was writing the bloody books. I've paid my dues on this. And when I set up the hedge fund in 2004, I had no idea that I would like to do more of this technology kind of stuff, this kind of stuff that Ray Dalio, the hedge fund manager, does, which is actually reach out to a big audience. You couldn't do that anyway back in the day. Thanks to TikTok and YouTube, you can. And then gradually the idea came about, well, wait a minute, what if we can remove St. James's Place, who's got 9,000 clients, 900,000 clients, and they're a FTSE 100 company with billions of assets under management. What if you could do it without having any assets under management? Like Airbnb doesn't own any properties. Uber doesn't own any cars. What if we don't own any assets? You own the assets. You put them with whoever you want, but we give you the data and the education. And I don't mean education as in here's a book, bugger off. I mean access. Well, for the first 250 people, access to me. After that, for people after that, obviously other people um, would be um, giving them, give them access. But you hold your cash, and then that way you're in control, and you have total transparency and total control. Your cash is with whichever broker you want. Uh, and I've been talking about it a lot, and it's called my, it's my campaign for a million. Uh, and then because of the reviews, Merrill Lynch, American Express, BBC, uh, Chicago Board of Trade, Coots Bank, and all of these. I thought, you know what? We've got something here. And then we trialed it. And we think we've got a company which could actually remove. And recently I've been saying, actually, I want to float the company. And then I thought, actually, it should remove a St. James's Place because they're bloody useless. Uh, I'm just moving my ISA and SIP out of funds, annualized over five years which I self-invested, never saw the IFA, <laughs> I know. Um, I filtered and filtered stocks over the last week and about to buy in, hoping to improve my filtered over the year, but I'm concerned I might not have got my filtered last. Well, that's the only problem with just data. You need data and knowledge, and that's the only problem, Stuart, but at least you've you know taken the first step. Um, and that's why we launched this. And what I do when people on the webinar is I give them 40% off on the webinar. Okay, and it's a one off, as in you're not paying in the future. There's no subscription for the data. Data is updated every single month, and it's unlimited access to me for the first 250 people. And we are within that um, as well. And it's a one off as well. And the reason we did it is we thought this we wanted to make it a no brainer. So if somebody's got 100K today, or they plan to have in their pension, because this is for life, let's say that goes up an extra 10%, because well, that's 10K in a year just there. 
okay? Um, let's say it goes up 20%, that's 20K. Um, so we wanted to do that, and that's how it was basically valued based on all of that and give them um, the data as well. All of that data, all 10,000 updated every month. The idea is eventually they get venture capital investment in there. My wife is global head of venture capital unit at the British government, so I'm hoping she'll help me eventually when um, the time comes on the fundraising. Um, okay, so what I want to do, thoughts, oh, no, I did that one, I did that one, I'm blurred. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so any questions I missed, ask again. Suzanne, feel free to email me, no issues at all. Um, what the main two things people want is the access to me, which is only for the first 250, which you'd be anybody today. And they want access to all the data without paying in the future, which is only for the first 250. After that, it'll become for future people subscriptions and it won't necessarily be me because, you know, if you, we've already got clients from New Zealand to the Bahamas. So I don't want to, um, the only way I can scale it is it can't just be me for forever. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, any thoughts on seeking alpha alpha picks portfolio? Uh, don't know. I, you can't tell unless it was. I mean, they might have just shoved it in Nvidia and got lucky. That's why Sortinos are so important because so often I get people emailing me probably once a day saying, "Hey, my performance is up five hundred percent in a week or five hundred percent in a year," and then you say, "Fine, let's have a look," and then they had one stock and you know what I mean? It's not replicable unless you look at the Sortino. Is there consistent performance? And the Sortino has to be high um, as well. So it often happens with um, follow me accounts, you know, on things like eToro. When you actually break it down, it's like, geez, this is somebody who went to Vegas, put it on red and said, look at me. I just doubled my money. Aren't I really good? Or somebody who tosses a lot of coins gets waits for 10 heads in a row and says, look at me, I'm the world's greatest coin tosser. Give me your money. I'm going to keep tossing heads for you. Whenever you're taking a bet, let me do the tossing. Um, so statistics, easy to fool people. My wife works at Parliament, so let me know next time. Oh, fantastic, Will. Um, I will let you know. We do four events a year, usually in the House of Lords um, committee room. The biggest committee room that's in the House of Lords is where we do them because we fill. Oh, Will said he'll buy me dinner. Thank you. Just when I'm on a diet. Um, but no, I'm delighted. Well, I've been uh, able to help. So hopefully I will meet you, um, and email me, uh, but don't worry about the dinner part. Um, what is your email address to discuss the investments program? Oh, I'll share the email address. Arpesh.patel at tradermind.com. There we go. Kaldi, a 10,000 stocks in your spreadsheet global. Yeah. What you've got there. Let me just show you that. Let me just show you what's in there and what I mean by 10,000. Um, do you see those exchanges? All of those can go in your SIP. So there's NASDAQ, London Stock Exchange. Uh, these are all traded and can go in your SIP. Okay, so they're European companies, but they can go in your SIP. So that's what the 10,000 is. And why do we start with 10,000? Well, because uh, these are co each company is a collection of individuals that runs them, that wants to manage your pension. Because if you buy shares, that's what you're asking them to do, manage your pension. So we want CVs. Uh, if somebody's going to manage my pension, I want to look at, I'm not going to go, oh, well, I'll just pick that one that I heard about on TV. I want all the best in the world. So that's how we did it. Uh, we wanted a big list. Would you invest? Oh, I think we did that. So if there's anything I've not answered, let me know. Um, the other way was this, 100K, 20% return on a 500K ISA. If you get a 20%, that's 100K that you've made. Um, on a 500k ISA. The problem is the IFAs are spraying and praying and giving you 4.5% because it's in their interest to get as many kickbacks as possible from many funds as possible. That's fundamentally... Not all of them, I should say. Not all of them have the kickback model. I should be fair. Not all of them. Uh, okay. Um, albeit, I think it's a two-hour multiple-choice question to become an IFA. Um, Although I should say the fund management um, exam isn't much more difficult either. <laughs> uh, so that's the website you go to. So Suzanne and the others, that's your website. Okay, we've done it over 24 installments. There's only a one-off cost. So you can do it in installments. It's not a subscription. Uh, for now, and that's the coupon for the 40% off. Uh, the reason it's done, and if you're in a company, it's financial education for you as company directors. I'm showing you all the 
companies in the world. So you should be able to get the VAT back as well. We've never had an issue. Um, Suzanne, that's absolutely correct. Kaldi, thank you um, as well. That's where you go. It is first come, first serve, though, um, because I can't, because of the busy schedule, I can't if 20 of you signed on i'd be stuffed um in one go so um it is first come first serve on that and i'm afraid the prices are going up again and i know i know you're going to scream and shout and say well you've done that about five times now i know well that's because a bit like bitcoin um the more we're in circulation the harder it is to mine more time uh, but no more importantly it's because we've got clients some who've made a million in a year well that's because the market did really well last year i know but that's not my fault i feel a bit stupid um having it so cheap one person said to me today he goes i only signed up in december i've made my money back on it and i said i know and you've got 30 years of me now that you get basically for free so anyway um that's why i think we've got a model which can upend uh fund managers and ifas i mean ifas get all reds i'm afraid fund managers get almost all reds you the private investor is the closest to this now i've written for private investors since my ft columns even since my first book for private investors called trading online in 1997 or 98 and it became an international bestseller published by the financial times so i've been communicating to private investors since then and what i know is they're the closest to be able to get everything right the two things they lack proven process which is research-based, and the data, I guess, and having somebody to hold their hand. That's the main thing that they lack, unfortunately. But there's nothing else that compares. IFA certainly don't compare, I'm afraid. And it's no, no surprise that these are the two groups that I get most complaints about. Oops, I get most complaints about it. It's as simple as that. So we decided, well, how do we create something which could be a billion-dollar company, which becomes like an Uber or Airbnb for asset management, gives them the service people want. We can run it at a loss to ourselves, like Uber and Airbnb, for donkeys. I give you a service, get the name out, make it global, and then worry about venture capital investment and floating it and all the rest of it and make it massive. That's the attitude I took. Um, because being in asset management since 2004, I can do what I want now. And at last I can do, rather like Bill Gates, I can do what I really want to do which is make sure this is the real ambition through the free information like these calls the ability to reach a million people is now within reach you know i've got a million views already on youtube i've got 300,000 followers on tiktok so reaching a million people isn't that great an ambition and over the next 10 years i should reach a million people at least okay if across their lifetimes through what i teach them they can make an extra million in their portfolios then that's a trillion added to people's pensions that's the ambition we're going to have more events like the one in parliament that i just did um so keep an eye out on telegram for those as well okay <coughs> um i'm going to check more questions and then i'm going to go i've been 90 minutes i've gone over what i wanted to go over um thank you um yes 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 excellent 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 and I think in the second half of my life, I think, you know, you know what's cool? A billion isn't cool. A trillion. Um, not for myself, because I won't have it. It'll be a million people globally. And we've got people in Bahamas and New Zealand that said, if they can make an extra million in their portfolios across their lifetimes, and lifetimes could be 25, 30 years, and they make an extra million across that, which, you know, if they're starting off with half a million, the extra they wouldn't have otherwise made, that's actually achievable through being able to transmit knowledge through the internet to reach that wider audience. Now, you can't do that unless you've already got 300,000 on TikTok this year. Um, and 99% of my clients come through TikTok, would you believe? So TikTok and YouTube, they come through. So it's achievable. I think that's a pretty cool legacy, a trillion in other people's pensions. I think, you know, well, I think it floats my boat. Um, I'm a teetotal vegetarian who's a bit of an introvert, believe it or not. So what else am I going to spend the money on? Um, thank you very much. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, thank you for everybody who signed up. I will send you an email in, uh, give me about 20 minutes because I'm going to have a coffee and I'm going to check the US markets because I think, yeah, they're on. Oh no, the NASDAQ's off. I have it on my watch. My son loves this. 
um, it's on my watch. Nasdaq's down today for a change. Well, it makes a nice change. Everyone takes a bit of a breather, don't they? Uh, thank you all very much. I will speak to you all very soon. Uh, and um, any other questions, just email me. Uh, otherwise, oops, let me just turn that off. Uh, any other questions, just email me. Otherwise, uh, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you found the market update useful. Hope you found the educational stuff useful. Hope you found the live bits and the different ways I'm doing things really useful as well. I will put this up on YouTube and you'll be able to watch the replay there. And I'll put a link to that on Telegram uh, as well. Um, one question was sometimes asked is what, wait a minute, is it just you? No, we've got uh, a team of five at the moment and we'll probably expand that. So some of them extract the data put it into the spreadsheet. Some of them do the graphics, the PowerPoint. Some of them do the admin. Two people do the admin. Um, we've got people in London, Dubai, and India. Um, uh, so should I fall under a bus? Don't worry. There's very good people like Parash who can take over and he'd appoint somebody as a locum were I to fall under a bus. Uh, Okay, I'm about to cycle now, so I hope I don't fall under a bus. Thank you all very much indeed, and I will see you at a future one. If there's anything else you'd like to see in the future, just email me, please. Uh, anything at all. I'm I love this stuff, so I'm very responsive to emails. I mean, I say very responsive. It might take more than a day. Uh, sometimes you get it back immediately. Sometimes it takes a day. But, um, yeah, thank you all very much indeed.